that's a golden female. Here's one that's just beginning to color up. He's very generous with his mind. That's a nice, big, healthy female. Are these Malawi fish? Or Future Lake Malawi. We're having fun with you, man. Wow. This is Camp Kennedy. Hey, what's going on? I'm uh, once again back down here in South Florida, extreme South Florida. Am I allowed to say the town we're in? We're in Homestead. We're in Homestead. And we're with Paul Redice. Hey, Redice. Redice, yes. Redice, Redice. Redice. Yes. Yeah, either way. Okay, perfect. <laughs> anyway, Paul and I, as you know, we're going to have an educational experience today. And Paul's got a few fish uh, that, you know, if you've been following along the channel, you know that Paul and I have been, uh, well, Paul's been helping me stock my rec pond. And I just kind of wanted to fill you guys in on what I'm doing. So Paul's got the next group of fish that he wants me to add into it. And we're actually going to get two different species today. We're going to get the Empress. Now, what, is, what are these guys? Talk to me about okay. them and why should I put these in? Okay. Uh, first of all, for a big pond, the most, um, as far as visibility, the fish that show up best are the metallic fish. You, last time we put in a good number of electric blue, which is the most metallic fish. It's a little more, the electric blue are a little more timid than this fish, and they have smaller numbers as far as babies. So they were the best fish to start with. Okay. This fish is very metallic blue, but you can see the red in it. It's a purple effect. And uh, in what we're looking at in this tank, actually we have two different types of fish, red empress, and we have another one called insignus. But for today, we're gonna put the red empress. These are young fish, so they're not in full color, Colored. Apologies, I don't know, my GoPro uh, is on the fritz, so we're going to go, we're not going to be able to go submersible today, but uh, we'll be able to see these fish when he pulls them right out for us. So this is why I love coming down here, because you guys know I'm, I'm a novice at best when it comes to fish, and I tend to want to go right to the source whenever I'm trying to learn something. Um, even with reptiles, if I don't know something, I try and find somebody that's smarter than me, and I implore you guys to do the same thing. Paul definitely has years of experience uh, with the cichlids and koi down here at Angel's Hatchery in Homestead. And uh, Paul, I know I've asked you before, how many years have you been playing around with fish? Uh, 40, well, in business, 47 years. In business, 47 years, that's but incredible. Playing, uh, around, playing, around year, playing around is uh, 62 years. Huh? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I can't wait, man, till I've been playing around with turtles that long, you know? And, and the funny thing well, is... I, I love turtles, too. I, was, oh, I, was I know that. Boy. When I was a boy, tortoises were there, were... there were no tortoises in the pet shops. Yep. If there were, I mean, I would have had a heyday with that stuff. Oh, it's there so were, much fun. You know, there were only uh, red eared sliders, the most common of the water turtles. Yep. And then there was not a lot of information being given out, only that you had to be careful for salmonella. It's the only, That's you know. it. So Okay, so right now, as always, Paul's... Uh, hunting down he always down, sets me up with down. some really nice fish so yeah. super excited it's always uh i yield to his expertise so these guys are in the same family as the electric blue correct they have always were up until a couple of years ago when they moved the electric blue into the lanakara neasa peacock family you, you know there's some um, mislabeling of these things because uh these things will these two will uh, uh they will cross quicker than anything um, again you get a beautiful metallic blue fish but with these uh, a cross isn't really a cross what you get is a, a metallic blue fish so so now there's will, a young male will these breed with the electric blue not in your pond okay you got plenty of you have plenty of males with you here's one that's just beginning to color up the males just he's got wow. good blue yeah. but his red is just beginning to come in that comes in later okay all right so there's a male of that fish um, let's see here and the sexual dimorphism, is it color related or? Yeah, it's color related. Okay. And um, it's all color related. Gotcha. And what are you actually looking for when you're selecting a fish? Well, what I'm looking for, are, are, we're gonna give you a ratio of 7.3. That's a nice, big, healthy female with a belly. This is called stage four grab, and a belly full of eggs, ready to lay. Oh my this gosh. This fish can lay eggs tomorrow. Let's get, a, let's get a bucket for this. Well, you know what's exciting, guys, is when I, you know, when I did the video putting, well, I actually didn't film putting the electric blue in the pond, but Paul, I don't know if I mentioned it to you, but in the bag, there were some Babies. fry. Yeah, right. there were some fry. So um, I don't know if they managed to survive, you know, being put in the pond or not, but we'll That's see. another young male, beautiful wow. fish. So we got three males. How old do these, or how old do these fish get, uh, rather? Uh, these fish get to be about 15 years old. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, they do all right. Here, get that bucket back here. 
Bring that bucket up here, Eduardo. So when we talk about um, the ratios, usually uh, you put the male number first. So it's going to be three males, right. and then you put a decimal point and seven females. So a three. 0.7 ratio, three males to seven uh, females. Uh, we do that also with reptiles, guys. So if right. you're wondering what we're talking about, yep, that's, that's what we're talking about. Right. You know, just really to be perfectly honest, why I like coming here is because he's very generous with his his mind. So uh, that's how I try to be on the channel. So it's always fun to find someone else who's as giving with information. Yes, look at that. And that's a golden female. That's a female. So yep. the females look beautiful. Uh, it's a beautiful it's, female. It's kind of unlike some other species where the females are a little bit more drab. Yeah, what I'm doing is uh, the way that 100% uh, to, to be able to sex in 100%. Okay. <clears throat> you look at the back vent, the back vent on the fish. This is all um, basically most fish from Malawi. It's visible. See the vent? That's where the egg comes out, the okay. back vent. On the male, the back vent is almost invisible. See the difference in size? Yep. On the male, the females are basically four to five times the size. So and that's to pass an egg. That's to pass an egg. So we got it. We got uh, a 3.7. These fish have more babies than the electric blue at one time. Okay. So a 3.7 is an excellent ratio to start out even in a great big pond. All right, very cool. These now, these will come along and you'll have them. Now, what you guys know, if you even follow along, we did our first swimming with episode. I don't know if you saw where I swam with an anaconda this week. Oh, no, I didn't see I didn't. Okay, that's okay. But yeah, I don't expect everyone to watch every single video of mine. I'm not that narcissistic. But <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. No, but, um, you know, I'm having a problem right now. Two things happened in yes. the pond. One, I allowed the water level to drop in the vault where the pumps are. And my ion gen probe, it's a probe that kind of kills algae was out of water for about a week so i got this real bloom of algae on my rocks and it's right. string algae right um well we need the boise we need the boise so these these next fish that i'm going to get are when i first met paul you mentioned that they're one of the best kept secrets yes that's right very few people know their value as far as consuming algae okay and in south florida where people have ponds and they keep these fish in ponds like placostomus to eat algae these fish, they're diurnal fish, daytime fish, so they eat algae all day long. And uh, in any of their tanks, where there's any number of them at all, the tank is bone clean as yep. far as algae. And you could see the fish picking at the wall at hairs of algae that are not even visible. Well, we got to check these out. I, I already have a few in the pond, but they were from my front pond. I kind of moved them over. Right, right. I'm about to uh, try and get a colony because you say they're also going to be spawning soon? Yeah, they're spawning right now. Okay, so this gonna, is fantastic. We're pick stage four females, all of them. Within two weeks, they'll all have eggs in their mouth. Oh, that's oh. what we're going to get for the boys. Very cool. So we're they're mouth right brooders. Now. Right, they're mouth brooders. And there, we're going to set up a little colony. All right, very cool. Thanks, Paul. So I'm really excited, man. Now, you know, since I got you, uh, last week when I, last week I was talking about Placosomus. Someone said, "Get a Placosomus. It'll eat algae." Do they eat algae? Yes, they certainly do. They do, okay. They're great for algae. Okay. Yeah. The costumes are, uh, they've always been considered the number one algae eater. The Boise is a vegetarian fish. I mean, it's it's exceptionally, it's an exceptional fish as far as cleaning up algae. Cool. Plus, the Du Boise will readily spawn in your pond. And you have such a big pond, and you know, that yeah. you, need, you need fish that are going to be a maintenance fish that will populate it itself. Themselves. Cool. That's what we got to do. All right, where are we headed, buddy? I uh, wouldn't go down here. I've got a. Do you want me to carry anything? Uh, yeah, sure. You yeah. Oh, right. I got the nets. So how cool is this, guys? I love bringing you along uh, when I'm doing things like this, and uh, it's kind of fun. Now, something you have to remember, also, folks, is that whenever you set up a new ecosystem, like my pond it takes a little while for that ecosystem to balance out as you can see i'm adding animals to it we're trying to get the water to stabilize there's a lot of things that that have to happen right paul yeah that's right and, you know? and uh, gradualism is very important not to not to try to do everything at the same time all at once right uh, because you can get keep get it and keep it in balance easier if you see how step one works then you follow it gotcha that's what i've been trying to do so as a problem arises uh, you have to approach it. And the other cool thing about a large body of water like I have is it takes a long time for things to get lethal because it's such a lar large volume of water. Big advantage. Yeah. Big advantage. All right. Look at these fish. These are the Du Boise. Now, guys, I got to tell you, 
you know, some people might go in for the real colorful fish. You guys know that, I mean, I guess it's part of me being colorblind a little bit. This fish is just cool. I just think this is a cool fish. Yeah, yeah this fish is just cool. All, every, every part of the life, life cycle of this fish. First of all, they've got a different look than most other African fish. Uh, they start out as a little spotted, like almost like a saltwater jewel damsel, and they end up with they end up morphing into a saddled fish, a fish with a yellow band. And uh, in here, we're going to pick out three males and ten females. Okay. And, and uh, the males are going to be big, ready to go fish, and the females are all going to have. Um, advanced stages of eggs production production present in their belly. And look at their uh, look at their vat, the, the tank that they're in. If you, I don't know if you guys can see, it is extremely clean in here. There's barely any algae and there's there they go. I don't know if you guys can see. Look at that. They're grazing on the sides here. And there's nothing to do. Yeah, that's so cool. So these guys are gonna have a veritable buffet at Camp Cannon and I'm excited about that. Yeah they'll be eating right now. Also, this fish, this is a Lake Tanganyika fish. This fish, believe it or not, was one of the very first imports of African cichlids really? back in the 60s. Oh, get out. Yeah. I, that's but, so cool. But back then, there were um, there were not very many breeders of it because they were, not easy to, they were not easy to reproduce. These fish are best off just left alone with a lot of algae and let them take care of themselves. Okay. People try to overhandle them and, and uh, produce them in... Uh, extreme measures and smaller containers and that kind of stuff doesn't work. It works with a lot of fish, not this fish. You got the perfect setup. Awesome. All right, so and you know that's another thing I like to do, guys. I'm not really looking to breed them for profit in any way. Um, I'm more interested in providing habitat. I say it so many times on uh, the channel. It's about habitat and enjoying the animals in that habitat that I've created. And also, what's going to be the least amount of maintenance for me or hands on this, you know? So uh, that's what's excited. That's why I like certain uh, animals over other ones because if they can't thrive and do well here in Florida, they really don't want to really keep them. Because, you know, I'm doing videos, I'm traveling all over. I want things that are going to just do well on their own. And for me, I like being a little spy on their lives, you know? I like to put on the mask and snorkel and get in the pond. Now, we still got to get Paul up to my place. It's hard to get yeah, this we'll guy away. It's hard to drag him away from his farm. I know the feeling. Uh, but we, I definitely would love to do a swimming with the cichlids when this pond is open. We yeah, should do that. Yeah. I think that would be cool because having you kind of bring us through, Ken, and look, this is what's going right. This is what's going wrong. Right, it right. would be such a valuable uh, episode. So we'll look for that in the future, guys. Just spit out. Oh, get out of here. That's a baby? Yeah. So, you know, here's a question for you. How do you get the babies from the spawning well, or, tank yeah. into the nursery? Yeah, well, this is why I'm looking in this tank. Okay. Right now, right now, these are just now ready to have gone through. So what I'll do is I'll take all of the fish, all of the females with babies and eggs, and I'll put them inside. And I'll put them inside that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You will separate all the fish in yeah. this tank? Yes, yes. It's work, but you know what? It, I, don't do, I don't do it all myself, but, and I have other people who know how to do it. But we don't, um, uh, yeah, well, that way, uh, otherwise, you're just letting the fish eat their babies, and that's not, that's, that's not what we do. That's not farming. <laughs> that's, that's not, not a good that's idea. Not farming. Wow. Whew. I thought I had it rough digging in the dirt for my uh, tortoise eggs. This is entirely different. Okay, so we start out with a big female here. Again, on these fish, these fish are a little bit hard to see, but if you look closely, you will see... This is a female. She has a bigger back vent. Okay. This vent, if this vent, you ha you have to look very closely. But it is there, and it is much bigger than the males. Plus, there's a couple of other things about this fish. The face of the fe not too many people even realize the face of the pe the female is more narrow, and their lips are smaller. So, in other words, their whole face is more pointed. Okay, that's a female. Now, this tank, because it's one of our breeder tanks, it has a lot less. Uh, it has a lot less uh, males in it, so there's no fun. Here's a male. Okay. You see, I don't know if you can see it, but this one here has protruding lips. The back vent on this fish is, is nearly, in, nearly invisible. It has, the lips are more squared off at the front, and the head's a little, a little bluer. 
All right, so there's some appearance differences that only that you really have to be keyed yeah, into. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Right, that's right. So, okay, here's another female. Definite female. Cool. Nice, heavy body. This fish is ready to lay eggs. So, will she lay the eggs and then kind of put them in her mouth? Like, yeah. collect them? Yeah, that's what she does. She, okay. She lays the eggs and she puts them in her mouth. So, when she lays them, is she laying them near rocks or someplace? Well, no. Make where does she'll, she do it? She'll do it in the wide open. Oh, oh wow. See, I wouldn't expect that. I would thought maybe they'd hide the eggs and then turn around and scoop them up, but that's incredible. Oh, look at this. Look at the babies. How old do you reckon they are? Uh, these are about, um, uh, well, these were laid about 20 days ago. And as room runs out, right. mom just expels them. That's right. Holy smokes. That is something. Let me get one more little shot of this guy closer up. Let me see if I can zoom in. That is amazing. And will they develop more spots as they age? Or? Well, they'll show up better, yes. Okay. Wild. Now here's one that's almost done with her spots, but what a beautiful fish. Yeah, it is. There's a fish that's 10 months old. This was born late last season. Wow. Yeah, that's gorgeous. And then they start to develop that band. Then they start to, here's another baby. Then they start to develop that band, that's right. Look at this, he went over here. There he is. That is awesome. That is awesome, that's man. Really Guys, how cool will it be if we're snorkeling, we start to see little baby the Boise. Now, is the Boise the genus or the species name? Uh, the Boise is a species, Trophius. Trophius, okay. Yeah. In the Trophius family, there's a number of different forms of Trophius morii. There's probably 75 of them. Whoa. There's a lot more that haven't been discovered yet, too, but 75 are uh, identifiable types. It's just incredible there's that much fish diversity oh, yeah. in the Rift Lakes. It is incredible, yeah. All right, very cool. I'm going to let them scoop them up. We've learned a great deal about fish today. As always, I want to thank Paul for his hospitality and his mind and uh, for doing this because we need people to get interested in nature and become stewards of nature and uh, you know create businesses around nature and that's exactly what he's done for darn near 50 years and uh, we love coming down here uh, if you guys like it why don't you let me know in the comments it seems like everyone loves Paul to show up on the channel they love your knowledge buddy. thank you very much by the way I appreciate your wonderful comments I, we watch you my family and I and my extended family my children, we all, we appreciate your acknowledging our, our hard work, hard work, lifestyle, professionalism, yep. all of it. All right. Well, don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. Go on over to Camp Cannon Army for more original content. Like and subscribe over there as well. And as always, we're on Patreon at patreon.com slash Camp Cannon. Thanks again, guys. We'll talk to you all soon. See ya. Bye-bye. Hi, buddy. He's flicking his tongue, checking me out. He is a handsome guy.